very witty and an alcoholic, just barely on the way down. She's also Polly's mother, although their roles have somehow gotten reversed, with Polly doing all the nagging, scolding, and setting up the house rules. Let me tell you my story. 
I never see you eat, and you don't sleep well, so I'm worrying about you. Who says I don't sleep well? You're here until four or five in the morning, pacing and coughing and smoking. I hear you in there. <laughs> it's the television. I listen to cancer commercials. At four o'clock in the morning? And who are you calling to? The weather bureau. At four o'clock in the morning? Seriously? I like to know what it's going to be like at five o'clock. Jesus, do more years of this and you're going to be a professional pain in the ass. Okay, fine with me. If you don't give a crap, I don't give a crap. And watch your goddamn language. How can I watch mine if you don't watch yours? I talk this way. It's an impediment. You want me to wear braces on my mouth? You might as well. I never see it, except a cup of coffee for the breakfast. What the hell difference does it make? Because if you don't take care of your body, it won't take care of you. I don't want to take care of my body. I want somebody else to take care of it. Like, why do you think I'm talking to an 80-year-old man? Gosh. It's like talking to a child. I don't get any respect. How the hell am I going to be a mother if I don't get any respect? How can I respect you if you don't respect yourself? Huh? My frog mother. Three weeks and I blew it. Don't be angry for me. Don't be mad at me. And stop apologizing. Make me apologize for the way I talk to you. It won't happen again, sweetheart. I promise. I promise. But don't promise me. Promise yourself. You've got to take over it. I can live my life with yours. You should be the one in charge around here. Listen, you're really getting me crazy now. I didn't write all the rules and regulations nice and neat on a piece of paper and I'll do whatever it says. Put on one page where I yell at you and on one page where you yell at me. Now, you want to hear what happened to me this afternoon or not? Okay. What happened this afternoon? I think I have a job. Seriously? Where? Well, I was in Gucci's looking for a birthday present for Toby when suddenly I meet this old girlfriend of mine uh, who used to be a vocalist in this singing group. Two marks in a track or some other goddamn thing. Anyway, she can't get over my gorgeous new figure and asks what I'm doing lately. And I tell her I'm looking for a good, honest work, preferably around a lot of single men, like an airport career, Okinawa, or something like that. You're looking at me funny. If you're thinking about hitting up the cold yellow stuff in the kitchen, forget it. I'm just listening. All right, well, she starts to tell me how she's out of business now and is married to an Italian with four restaurants on Long Island and right away I think he's in with them all. I mean, one restaurant, you're in the business. Four restaurants is the mafia. Anyway, he's got a place in the Garden City and is looking for an attractive hostess who says, Good evening, right this way please, and wiggle to her behind and get that 190 bucks a week. So I played it very cool and nonchalantly, go down my knees, kiss her shoes, lick her ankles and carry her packages up to the store. So, hostess in the restaurant, is that what 
you really want to be? No, but what I want to be is a mazur in the New York Athletic Club, but there are no openings. Oh, come on. Can I finish my story? Why don't you finish your story? Thank you. I'll finish my story. Uh, so we go around the corner to Shrafts, and she buys me a sherry, and we sit there chatting like a couple of schoolgirls, and she writes down the address, and I have to be uh, at the Blue Cocktail Restaurant at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, where lucky Luciano's nephew will interview me. <sighs> All this in one day, Plus, getting my knees wrapped by an 80-year-old degenerate on the cross-town bus, and you're going to stand there and tell me there's no God. You hit a glass of sherry. Christ! Why did you have a glass of sherry? Because the waitress put it down in front of me. The waitress don't put a glass of sherry in front of you unless you order it. I don't understand you. I rush home happy, excited, bubbling with good news. And who do I find when I got here? A 17-year-old cop. I'm not loaded. I'm not smashed. I'm thrilled to death because I spent a whole day out of this place and I came home alive and noticed and even wanted. Do you, do you really need a glass of sherry to feel like this? I was tense. I was afraid of blurring the job. So I had one standing a little drink. But you could have had anything else. Like tea, coffee, milk. Thank you, miss. When do we land in Chicago? You know, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Go inside and study. And when you pass French, we will discuss it in a foreign language. Until then, shiva or shave out or whatever the hell that expression is. No, Mom, listen. I think it's terrific. You think what, Charlie? About today, about getting the job. I really do. When will you start? Well, in the first place, I didn't get the job yet. And in the second, <coughs> I'm not sure I'm going to take it. So, what's this all excitement about? About being asked. About being wanted. I don't think I understand. Please, God. I hope you never do. Listen, how about one more chance of being a good mother? If I screw up, you can buy out my contract for $100, and I'll move out. But who is going to bring me up? I'll put you on automatically. Hey, come on, get dressed. We have a party that started 15 minutes ago. What party? Uh, Toby's birthday. She's 40 years old today. She's promised to take off her makeup and reveal her true identity. I can't. I have to study. I have chemistry test on Monday. Thank you. Men don't like you if you're too smart. All I'm going to do is pour. But I have nothing to wear. Maybe this. See it, see it,
would it rise to even know where the garden city is? Hey, let's have a good time tonight. I'm beginning to feel like my old self again. Oh, Mom, I forgot to tell you. We have a lunch date tomorrow. Who has a lunch date? We do. You, me, and Daddy. What Daddy? My Daddy, Felicia's husband. Do you remember? Tomorrow at 12 o'clock at Rampenmeyer's. Why didn't you tell me? Because I never see you. And now I see you and I'm telling you. He just wants to talk, see how we're getting along. We're getting along fine. Yeah, he knows. You mean, he's going to check what shape I'm in. God, he's going to lick in my ears, under my fingernails. Mom. I'll never pass. Mom, stop it. He just wants to spend some time with us. That's all. Is he giving just questions? Like, what's the capital of Bulgaria? Mom, stop worrying. We will be all right. If he does ask you, the capital of Bulgaria is Sofia. Just what I needed. Physical examination and room for my I think I should have cut two cherries today.